before we begin this morning's message on one and the same Messiah, the Lord Messiah, our God. Before we go there, I want to read for you from the Torah, Isaiah. And what will he answer the messages of any nation? That Zion has been established by the Lord. In it, the needy of his people shall find shelter. You are either a liar or a lunatic, or you are exactly that which God has ordained you to be, and God has spoken from the beginning of time. God does not make space for compromise. He does not make space for errors. He does not make space for liars and cheats. There is only one truth with God. And that is the truth that He speaks. Anything else but from God is a lie. And I want to take you this morning. And I want to show you what the revelation of God has done for mankind. God has had it there from the beginning. But He has an appointed time when He opens up. And He says, you are forgiven. He has an appointed time when He says, you will turn back. He has an appointed time when He restores, rebuilds and lifts up. God has an appointed time. And this is the year that God has made, that God has ordained, and that God will move it the way He will move it. His vision, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. And we go through and we see the vision of the four living creatures that God has put there. And they surround, they surround uh, the most important figure of all creation. And that is the Messiah. They surround Him, protect Him, move ahead of Him from north, south, west and east. They are around Him. The glory of God, we are told. His train fills the temple. He is high and lifted up. We're told that the angels cry, Holy, holy is the Lord. The temple is built by the glory of God, not of a man. Now we go to verse 26 to 28. Of Ezekiel chapter 1. And above the firmament that was above their heads was the likeness of a throne. As upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. And I saw as it were glowing metal as the appearance of the fire within round about. From the appearance of his loins, from up, from his loins and upwards, the appearance of his loins and downwards, I saw as it were an appearance of fire. And there was a brightness round about him, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. And this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Jehovah. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice, one that spake. I want to turn your attention back to what the Lord has written in the scriptures. And he says, from his loins and upwards. Their appearance. And we look at that description. And then we will see the Messiah. The Lamb of God. 
And when you see the symbols and you see it through scriptures, you will see the Messiah, the Lamb of God. And then when we look at that description from his loins and downwards, we see a description of the Lord Messiah, the Judge, the fire of God that brings judgment. Two separate figures, one and the same Messiah. Ezekiel says it. He says it another time later on in scriptures. He says the same description. And then he says on his head was this halo and throne. One and the same Messiah. And God does it three times. And so the prophet must stand up and say, One and the same Messiah. He must declare it as the word of God says it. God leaves no ways for compromise. He says, go test, go test and see what I have done. Go see for yourself what I have done. Now we go to Lamentations chapter 5, verse 14 to 22. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. The joy of our heart is ceased, our dance is turned to mourning. The crown is fallen from our head. Woe unto us! For we have sinned. For this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. For the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Thou, O Jehovah, abidest forever. Thy throne is from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever? And forsake us so long a time. Turn thou unto thee. And O Jehovah we shall be turned. Renew our days of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. And God says I've never given you a bill of divorce. God says in Ezekiel, Ezekiel testifies and says, there's coming a day that Ezekiel will rise up again. He will bear the scars. He will bear the testimony. And you will hear the voice of the living God saying, come home, come home, be resurrected again. Because they one and the same Messiah. Then I read from Isaiah chapter 1. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Jehovah. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye are willing and obedient, ye shall eat good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of Jehovah has spoken. From his loins and downwards, he is the judge. From his loins and upwards, he is the merciful, loving God that we serve. He is the one that covers you. He is the one that protects you, that leads you and guides you. We are told 
in scriptures. His feet were covered. Why was his feet covered, O oh people of God? Because if they were not covered, you would have seen the scars in his feet. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 15. Thus shall Ezekiel be unto you a sign. According to all that he had done, shall he do when this cometh. Then shall he know that I am the Lord Jehovah God. And thou, son of man, shall it not be in that day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their hearts, their sons and their daughters, that in that day he that escapeth shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear with thine ears. In that day shall thy mouth be opened to him that escaped, and thou shalt speak and be no more dumb. So shalt thou be a sign unto them that they shall know that I am Jehovah. What is Ezekiel prophesying about there? He's foretelling the people, He's coming, He's coming. Another prophet will come about and He will carry the same testimony. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. And this is the main message. What does Ezekiel talk about in chapter 37? 1 to 14, he says this, The hand of Jehovah is upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of Jehovah, and set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round and about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord Jehovah, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy over these bones, and say unto them, Oh, he dry bones, hear the word of Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and he shall live. Before we even go on, what was Ezekiel talking to? He was talking about the living people of God. He was not talking about the dead. Jesus himself said, let the dead bury the dead. Because they are of no more significance to the living. He is talking about the nation of Israel. The people of God. He's talking to them. He says, Ezekiel, stand up and prophesy. Give them life with the breath of God. Give them life through the Spirit of God. He says, he's coming again and he will recognize what God is all about. He is a merciful God. He is not coming to judge you. You've paid the price in full. No longer. And what does Ezekiel say? He will reveal to you further revelations. The nation of Israel. And I'm saying this to you. You are the sign to all the world 
of what God has done from the beginning of time and that the judgment will fall upon the world because you paid the price in full. You paid the price in full. You are forgiven. And God says, come, let me restore you. Come, let me restore you. Cleanse yourself out. Because in Isaiah, he says, let me tell you how I'm going to do it. And he's done it exactly, exactly as foretold in scriptures. All the T's have been crossed and all the I's have been dotted. Not one thing has been left out by the living God. Not one thing has been left out. Even to the sign of Jeremiah. There is a reason why God has done it the way he's done it. There is no other reason. He tells you exactly where to find him in the scriptures. He tells you the GPS coordinates of him. He tells you the signs. He tells you to the tooth. He tells you to the scars. He tells you the back. He tells you the face. He tells you all things. He says that he won't fail the test. Because I have chosen him. Not anyone else has chosen him but God. Now let's go on. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring up flesh upon you and cover with skin and put breath into you that he shall live and he shall know that I am Jehovah. He's not talking to dead people there. He's talking to the living people. He's talking to his people, Israel. He's speaking life into his people. He's saying you are the head and not the tail. He say you are the head. The church is running around from this side to that side. They split. They don't even know where they are. Because why? They haven't got the head on the body. They haven't got the head on the body. Most people think God's a big joke. He's your buddy. Yes, he's my friend. <laughs> But I respect and love him with my life. Do I take this seriously? I've laid my life down many times. For the souls of men. Not for anything else. But for the souls of men. And when God appeared to me. I know what I saw. And I saw what I know. And he says, you are the sign. You will bear the scars. You will bear the test. You will go through it all. Nothing left behind. And I beheld and lo, there were sinews upon them. And flesh came up. And skin covered them. And there was no breath in them. What is the Lord talking there to us about? There was no breath in them. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Because without the Spirit of God, I have no breath in these bones. I have no life in this body. Without the Spirit of God, I cannot move anywhere. So what does He say? Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith Lord Jehovah, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Where is the breath come from? But the mouth of God. Where did Adam get his breath from? Of life but from God himself who breathed into him life. And then he was able to walk with God. He was able to move in God. 
He was under God. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and are not clean, but are cut off. And God says, no longer are you the tail, but you are the head that we can jump and rise up and say, God has done it. God has been faithful. God has done it. His glory fills the temple. Isaiah said in the latter days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What is he saying, people of God? He's saying exactly what he's saying in the latter days. I will pour out my spirit. No longer will things be hidden from you. Why does Israel look for a prophet? Why do they look for the prophet? Because the prophet of God can see what God has revealed. And the true prophet of God will stand and declare the truth. And the false prophets will declare the false prophecies. And there are liars and cheats and thieves and robbers. Because the word of God says, Hope oh, you've led my people astray. Why? Because your fasting and praying means nothing. Because you fast and pray for your own self. You are not past fasting and praying to seek the face of the living God. You prophesy lies, why? And hope that they'll come to pass. Hope that your prophecies will come to pass and they don't. Why don't they come to part? Because they're lies. God does not honor a liar. He will never honor a liar. He will always honor the man and woman of God. And that's God. If you want to follow Him, then you need to remember what He says in the Word of God. Not by the mouth of a man, but by the mouth of a living God through the Spirit of God. There is no other way. You cannot do this with the head. My brain was destroyed. It has been plucked out. I cannot move in head knowledge. I can only move by the Spirit of God. Just the same way they thought they could stop Samson. They plucked his eyes out and thought they could stop God. They didn't stop God. They thought they could take the Messiah, nail him to a cross, take his very life, and then pervert his truths and pervert his everything he stood for by adding in more lies and more lies and more lies. Till nobody can recognize it. And then God says, but lo, wait, I've got a man that will see the truth. And you will test him and know that he is the prophet of God. That's what the word of God says. Now go do. Now go do what God tells you to do. I'm either a raving lunatic a liar, a cheat, a thief, or I am exactly what God says I am. There's no in-between. And the man that stands up and says, Thus saith God, he better be sure, thus saith God. No in-betweens. God doesn't leave place for compromise. He doesn't leave place for half a truth. He has only the truth to stand on. And he will only stand upon that truth for all eternity. And what comes next? 
Well, the Word of God says what comes next. Read it. Seek the living God and know it. What comes next? And then declare it. I hope this message is that which one will bless you with from a living God through the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen.